Hello everyone, this is Ms. Sarah Vassioni. Welcome to a new episode. We're going to be working on Unit 6, Lessons 1 and 2. Our topic of the day is inventors. So I want you to think of all the things in your life that you cannot live without. As simple as light, as simple as a refrigerator or a mobile phone. And I want you to think of the people behind all those great ideas that we are in need of today. Now we're going to jump to our objectives. Let's get started. We're going to talk about machines at home. We will read a magazine article about robots and we're going to answer questions. And we will use transitive and intransitive verbs correctly. Now, do you wish to have a robot at home? Why or why not? I want you to think about having a robot. Close your eyes and just imagine with me if you had a robot at home. What would you need it for? Do you think you would need it to clean or maybe help you do your homework or maybe as simple as play music? Think about it and give a reason for your choice. Now, I want you to tell me how do machines help us at home? Do you think having machines are is useful? Think about the washing machine, think about the television, think about the vacuum cleaner that we use to clean the floor. And think about how helpful they are. You can give it a scale from 1 to 10. If it's most useful, you can give it a 10. If it's least useful, you can give it a 1. Now, usually machines can help us to wash the dishes, or clean clothes, or even cook food, and even clean the floor. Now, we're going to jump on to exercise 2. Which of the robots below is a scientific robot? And which are personal robots? Okay, if we look at the three uh, robots on the lower right hand side of the slide, you will see the first one is called a robot lawn mower. So this robot actually cuts the grass or mows the lawn and therefore it is used outdoors. The second robot is actually a vacuum cleaner. So it is a robot that acts as a vacuum cleaner sucking in all the dirt and all the small things that might be on the floor at your home or at your office or at your school. The third robot on the right hand side is space robot. So picture three is the scientific robot. It is the space robot. The other two are personal robots. We use them for cutting grass or for, for vacuuming the floor. Now let's read robots in our lives. Scientists have used robots for a long time. Some robots dive underwater to study the sea. Others are sent inside volcanoes to study places that are dangerous. In 2012, a robot went to another planet to study the soil and the gases there. Personal robots are designed to help people with jobs at home. They include robot vacuum, cleaners to clean floors and lawn mowers to cut the grass in parks and gardens. Now, an engineer has designed a robot that can blank people. But when you speak, it will answer. It will hear your blank and turn its head in order to look at you. It will say hello to you when you come home and it can read a story to children it can give a message to the right person in the family. It can even remind you to send your emails. Some robots are designed to have friendly blank so that children will think they are toys. These robots are very useful in hospitals where they can blank children to help them feel better. Now we're going to jump to the next slide to try and fill in the blanks with our correct words for the day. So, the first one is done for us. Number one, they include robot vacuum cleaners to clean floors and lawn mowers to cut the grass in parks and gardens. So we're going to use the words in the box at the top of our slide to fill in the blanks. The first one is cleaners, it's already done for us. The next word is entertain. Faces, recognize, and voice. So if I'm going to entertain someone, I will make sure they are having a good time. It can be through 
playing sports, through singing, through uh, having fun, through enjoyment. Having a friendly face is useful for, for a robot. So if you have a robot at home, it should have a friendly face. It would be much better than having a no face at all or having a scary face. Uh, the next word is recognize. If I recognize people or recognize voices, it means that I notice them. And our fifth word is voice. Voice is actually what you hear. When you're speaking, we can hear your voice or the sound coming out of your mouth. So number one is done for us. Let's look at number two. Now an engineer has designed a robot that can recognize people. So number two is recognize. It will hear your voice and turn its head in order to look at you. Let's look at number four. Some robots, robots. Some robots are designed to have friendly faces so that children will think they are toys. And number five, these robots are very useful in hospitals where they can entertain children and help them feel better. So our words of this unit are cleaners, recognize, voice, faces, and entertain. Try to practice using those words as much as possible. If you want to remember your vocabulary words, you do not need to memorize them. All you need to do is use them as much as you can while speaking and through writing. Then you will never forget them. Okay, let's jump to exercise four. Answer the questions. Why was a robot sent into space? Why was a robot sent into space? The robot was sent into space to study the soil and the gases there. So the robot was sent to space to study the soil and the gases there. Why do you think a robot was used and not um, a person or an astronaut? Probably because it's safer for people to send robots. Let's jump to question two. What does a vacuum cleaner do? Of course, a vacuum cleaner cleans the floor. Why is a conversation with robots sometimes similar to a conversation with a person? Probably because when you speak, it will answer. It will hear your voice and turn its head in order to look at you. Question four, how can robots be used to help children in hospitals? Of course, they can be like toys and entertain the children. Okay, we're going to start lesson two. We need to underline the verbs in each of these sentences. And then we will answer the question of which of these are followed by a noun. Number one is done for us. Let's read it together. Scientists have used robots for a long time. So we underline the verbs have used. And yes, they are followed by a noun, which is robots. Let's jump to number two. In 2012, a robot went to another planet. Now we're going to underline went. And it is not followed by a noun. Let's jump to number three. When you speak, the robot will answer. We will underline both speak and will answer. And they are not followed by nouns. Let's jump to number four. Some robots dive underwater to study the sea. Now, now let's jump to number four. Some robots dive underwater to study the sea. We're going to underline dive and to study is actually an infinitive, so it is not considered a verb. And dive is not followed by a noun. Let's move on to number five. Other robots move skillfully inside volcanoes. Now, the verb here is move and it is not followed by a noun. And let's jump to the last one in this section, number six. We use special types of robots at home. We're going to underline use and it is not followed by a noun. Now, I want you to remember... Um, the difference between transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. So if we look at the example here, Ali played football. Ali is the subject, played is the verb, and football is the object or the noun that follows the verb. In this case, transitive verbs need a noun to complete the meaning. So we must 
know what Ali played. Ali played football. So here football is the object that Ali played. If we jump to the next exercise, if I say Ahmed sings and then I stop, this is an intransitive verb because it does not need a noun. Now let's analyze. Ali is a subject, sent is a verb, and message is the object. So who sent? It was Ali, the subject. And what was the verb? It was sent, which is a transitive verb because it needs a noun to complete the meaning. I cannot say Ali sent and I stop. I have to complete it by saying, what did he send? So I will ask, what did he send? And then we will say a message. In this case, a message is considered a direct object. So what kind of verb is written in this specific sentence? It is a transitive verb because it needs a noun after the verb to complete the meaning for us to understand the sentence. I hope this is clear for you. Let's jump to the next part, which is the grammar box, our favorite part of the day. Okay, transitive and intransitive verbs. A transitive verb or transitive verbs have a direct object after the verb. Some transitive verbs also have an indirect object. Tarek asked a question. We can say, what did he ask? And then I will say a question. That is a direct object. But if I say, Tarek asked me a question. And I say, who did he ask? He will say me. Me is considered an indirect object. Samir bought me a present. We will ask ourselves, what did Samir buy? A present. In this case, present is the direct object. But if I say, who did Samir buy it for? I will say me. So me here is the indirect object. Now, if I try and use a transitive verb with a direct object, with two or four, and an indirect object, it would be like, Ali sent an email to me. So pay attention to the difference. Now, let's jump to the last part of our grammar box. A verb is intransitive when it doesn't have a direct object. The sentence, the sentence can be complete with just a noun plus a verb. So, let's look at the examples here. The baby is sleeping. If I say the baby is sleeping, is sleeping is an intransitive verb because it doesn't have an object or a direct object. If I say Ahmed runs fast, this is an intransitive verb because it does not have a direct object following it. We left early in the morning. This is also an intransitive verb because it is not followed by a direct object. So let's look at number one. Let's run. That is an intransitive verb because it is not followed by an object. Number two, the bus has arrived. This is also an intransitive verb because it has no object. Number three, I gave my mother the message. This is definitely a transitive verb because it is followed by mother, which is an indirect object, and message is a direct object. Number four, please send me an email. This is also a transitive verb because it is followed by me, which is an indirect object, and an email, which is a direct object. Number five, I went to the shop. This is an intransitive verb because it has no object after went. Let's jump to number six. You have to work hard. This is also an intransitive verb because have is not followed by an object. Number seven, go to bed early. This is an intransitive verb because it has no object. And finally, number eight, I bought some milk. Here, this is a transitive verb because we know what was bought. The milk was bought. It is a direct object. So, wrap up time. We talked about machines at home. We read an, a magazine article about robots and answered questions. We used transitive and intransitive verbs correctly. Guys, you did a great job today. I'm very proud of you. Keep going. Always practice and have a wonderful day.